there's a fourth, judging by the ripples in the water. Oof. Got a bit of a snort. So there were five here yesterday afternoon. Now down to three or four. There we go, definitely four. Five hippopotamus. <laughs> I thought there were too many ripples, but just three. They're all five once again at Buffalzog Dam. And obviously one of them making that very characteristic hippo sound that sounds as though one of them has just told the best joke in the entire world and they're having a jolly good laugh about it. <laughs> it's a sound I miss. You don't hear it all that often anymore. There's no hippo in Voyatella Dam outside of our camp where we live. But it's a sound that I've always heard everywhere that I've lived and worked in the bush. I've always had hippo calling close by. And one of them, and I think it's the one on the left there, or in the middle of the group, that one over there, yes, he's the one that's making all the noise. One of them's got a few scratches and injuries on, in, on its back. Could, most likely, from a skirmish with another hippo, it could also be from potentially from a lion attack. Lions do attack hippopotamus, but they're le far less inclined to do that now this year, now that the drought is over and there's plenty of food and the hippo in good condition once again. Now, oh, Christina, you want to know if the hippos mind cold water. I don't think they do very well in Arctic temperatures, but other than that, no, the cold water doesn't bother them. Um, and of course, water bodies retain heat probably better than outside of the water. So I'm not sure how cold this water actually is, especially on days like today when the sun's been beating down on it all day from morning right up until now. But these sorts of temperatures, I would guess and say this water is probably somewhere in the low 20s centigrade, so in the low 70s Fahrenheit. I don't think it's that cold. Either way, hippopotamus are far more geared towards being prepared for the cold than they are for the heat, which is why they spend time in the water, to protect their skin, sensitive skin from the sun. I don't think they're too bothered by it. They've got such fatty, fatty tissue, a really thick skin and a very thick layer of fat, and plenty of fat in the in the muscle tissues as well. And I think you'll probably find that that insulates them just fine. They're not geared towards living in cold temperatures. Really cold temperatures, not our South African low felt temperatures. And you won't really find a hippopotamus in a high felt dam where it does get much colder. There's a creature out here, a little bit to the right of the hippopotamus, and yes, I did mistake one for a hippo the, yesterday afternoon. In my defense, there is no defense, but in my defense, the sun was shining straight into my eyes. But either way, there's some terrapins who have escaped the chill of the water to enjoy some last minute basking in the sun before it goes down and it gets cold and they return to the water once again. So as reptiles, of course, they are ectotherms, which means that a lot of their body control comes from external temperatures or body temperature control comes from external factors. They have to go and bask in the sun to heat up, which is why you often see them sitting on hippopotamus, like little mobile islands. Here we go, all enjoying the sun. They're not bothered by the idea of having to settle in the water. Now, Kirk, just moving back to our hippopotamus, Hello, hippopotamus. You want to know what does the hippo do when it goes underneath the surface of the water? I suppose it depends on the situation. The first thing that'll happen is it'll close its nostrils and its ears, something that we were chatting about yesterday afternoon on the Sunset Safari. As soon as it goes under, there you go, you can see its nostrils closing up and its ears will tuck inwards so that the water doesn't go into the sensitive ear canal and get stuck there and give them swimmer's ear. They can sink to the bottom and rest there 
and they can hold their breath for up to five, six minutes at a time. I've seen a hippo hold its breath for up to 10 minutes, but not much longer than that. And because they can't swim, then they'll run along, if they need to get somewhere, then they'll walk or they'll run along the bottom of the water and then propel themselves upwards every time they need to take a breath. I, but other than that, I mean, the water's so dark and murky, I don't know, they could, be, they could be having a party down there. They could be juggling, they could be doing karaoke, they could be, what else could they be doing that's relatively whimsical? Playing cards, playing poker. Perhaps this is a very um, riveting game of poker and they are sorry that they have to interrupt it every time they come to the surface of the water. That one's losing. That one got a bad hand. No, I'm joking, of course. Most of the time, they will, during days like today, they'll hang out in the shallows and they'll just rest. A lot of the time, they're actually sleeping. And they'll be resting with their head at the surface of the water so they'll be able to breathe. And they're even, even capable of propelling themselves to the surface while they're basically half asleep in order to take a breath and then sink back down again. And that, of course, is because they spend their nights, they have very, very busy nights as a hippopotamus. They can walk easily 10 kilometers, possibly even more, during one night, searching for grass to feed on. So they go off grazing in the evenings. And they always look so innocuous and unthreatening in the water. But they're not. They're absolutely massive creatures, very powerful and very dangerous. We spoke about the wounds on that one hippopotamus, Amy. No. A leopard would be... Oh, the chances of a leopard attacking a hippopotamus are next to nothing. I don't want to say it's never happened because perhaps there's a situation where a young hippo calf got separated by the mother or the mother died during the labor process and maybe a big male leopard might take advantage of that. So it's possible that it's happened historically at some point, but it's very, very unlikely. A hippopotamus weighs up to two tons. That's over 4,000 pounds. A big male leopard maybe tops the scales at 90, maybe a little bit larger than that. So under 200 pounds either way. There's no way they have the strength to attack a hippopotamus. And the only reason that lions dare to do it is because they have, they work together as a team. They're social hunters and having numbers really does help in that situation. But no, the hippopotamus at being attacked by a leopard is basically impossible. It's highly, highly unlikely. A hippopotamus being attacked by a hyena, a clan of hyenas, that has happened. And that we've actually seen before, shame, that poor baby hippo again. Situation where it was a baby and mum was, we don't know what happened to mum, we don't think that she made it. Uh, it was the, during the time of the drought and there was a young hippo at Arethusa Dam and unfortunately the hyenas got it. But again, a situation where you've got a social hunter working together to take down a big animal. And there's nothing much happening at, at the water's edge, but I don't know, perhaps Ronald has had more luck. Ronald was having more luck. Unfortunately, his waterbuck friends have gone away. He's still got his... Uh,